Today on KUJH News, two people are charged with sex trafficking in Lawrence. We'll have the latest. And new changes for student employment, what to expect next fall. Plus, a former Jayhawk is named NBA's Rookie of the Year. KUJH News starts now. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Thomas Hoppo. Two Lawrence residents were charged for alleged sex trafficking at a Lawrence massage parlor. Chen Li and Gu Hong Zhao of Lawrence were arrested Tuesday. They're charged with aggravated human trafficking and promoting the sale of sexual relations. Zhao is also charged with offering or performing sexual services at Spring Massage in Lawrence. Both suspects are being held on $5,000 $5, bail because they are in the U.S. illegally. They could face up to 653 months in prison for each count of aggravated human trafficking. Zhao makes her court appearance Monday and Lee is scheduled to appear May 18th. A woman convicted of first-degree murder needs a mental health evaluation first. Sarah Gonzalez McClinn was found guilty of killing her roommate, Harold Sasko, in Lawrence. She could face 50 years in prison. McClinn's attorney's request for a new trial was denied, but he says he hopes the evaluation will result in a lesser sentence. Pending the evaluation's results, McClinn could receive treatment and then be released or face time in prison. If she doesn't need treatment, she'd likely see 50 years in prison. A timeline hasn't been set for her evaluation. Some KU students might have to look for a second job next semester. Student hourly undergraduate workers that are non-work study are limited to 20 hours per week during the academic year. Student hourly work study may work no more than 29 hours a week. The rule will take effect in the fall of 2015, and the new policy may force some students who rely on university employment for living expenses to seek other jobs. KU announced this rule in response to the Affordable Care Act, which requires an employer to provide health care to anyone working more than 30 hours. Six officers are charged with manslaughter and murder for Freddie, uh, for Freddie Gray's death. Five of the six officers are in custody, and the state attorney said Mr. Gray was illegally arrested and wasn't secured by a seatbelt in the back of the police van. The officers also didn't seek any medical assistance for him. Baltimore Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake said she will continue to be relentless in changing the culture of police department. There will be justice for Mr. Gray, there will be justice for his family, and there will be justice for the people of Baltimore. The officer will be processed and have their bail set. If they're not released or cannot post bail, they'll go before a judge in district court the next day. The frustration in Baltimore can also be felt here in Lawrence. Students, faculty, and residents gathered at the Office of Multicultural Affairs to discuss the situation in Baltimore Thursday. The discussions range from police brutality, poverty, and even the media's role in covering the riots, saying it's painting a bad image of citizens in the city. Seeing someone uh, burn down their only grocery store, that's sexy. That gets people, that gets the advertisements, that gets people to click on the news. Is this really what all black people are about? And they, and they built this story around this 100 people and they forget the you know, 900 who were out there just trying to shed light. Close to 50 people attended the event and it was the last discussion forum of the year. Coming up on KUJH News, your weather forecast for a great looking weekend. And are you ready for a greener campus? See how some students are trying to make that happen. That's coming up next on KUJH. Seven Americans have been rescued from Gurkha, according to the U.S. Embassy in Nepal. Supplies have finally reached the region. Hospitals have been set up in the streets to treat victims. Gurkha is also being used to treat victims from the area's northern district. A group here at KU is doing its part to aid relief efforts. The Nepalese Student Association has raised $2,000 so far. It will be tabling downtown in front of Zen Zero tonight and tomorrow. Contributions can be made by sending money to nsaku at ku.edu on PayPal. A KU organization plants trees on Irving Hill today. Replant Mount Oriad planted 37 crab trees behind Hashinger and Lewis Halls. The event was created by the Center for Sustainability, and the center has been working to be named Tree Campus USA, an honor given by the Arbor Day Foundation. And shade and habitat and landscape and oxygen, um, and historically they have been um, a very 
uh, proud piece of campus landscape and there's nostalgia around what trees you know were in a certain area when someone was at school here decades ago. The funds for the trees were raised by private donors and help from KU Endowment. It's been a beautiful week in Lawrence but will it stay that way? Let's take a look at your weekend forecast. So starting off Saturday morning, it's going to start off at 54, but as we make our way into noon, we're going to go into the mid 70s. It's not going to change much by 6 p.m., but let's take a look at your three day outlook. So the high for Saturday is going to be 79, but there is a 30% chance of rain. So keep that in mind if you're going to the baseball game this weekend. And on Sunday, it's going to rise up to 84. Look at that. It's almost summer. And, but there is a 20% chance of rain, and you're going to start your Monday off with some thunderstorms, 60% chance of rain. Those thunderstorms are going to start in the morning, so if you're traveling to Lawrence, be careful. So we've got some good weather this weekend. Hopefully that uh, rain stays away for the baseball game, right? Yeah, hopefully it stays away because those temperatures are perfect baseball Absolutely. weather. Absolutely. Yeah, speaking of baseball, coming up next in sports, we'll have a live preview of the Kansas baseball team's matchup with Baylor tonight. Plus, the Royals' bats came alive in the first inning with the, in their first meeting with the Tigers this season. We'll have the highlights for you next. Don't touch that dial. KU baseball team kicks off a three-game homestand against Baylor this weekend. Game one of that series is tonight at 6 o'clock. Our own Travis Calvin is live at Hoagland Ballpark with a preview. Travis? Thanks, Nick. It's a great opportunity for the Jayhawks to get some wins this weekend against the Baylor Bears team that has struggled mightily away from home. They're only 1-8 on the road. However, Baylor has won 13-18 of 18 series all-time against the Jayhawks. KU is 19-26 overall on the season. That's following an, a disappointing Wednesday loss, 6-5 to the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions. KU's starting pitcher tonight will be ace Ben Krauth. Ben Krauth is the branding Big 12 Newcomer of the Week. He has a 6-3 overall record this season and with a 3.73 ERA. It's going to be a picture-perfect night here for some baseball. 75 degrees with the first pitch scheduled at 6 p.m. Reporting live at Hoagland Ballpark, Travis Calvin, KUJH Sports. Thank you, Travis. We'll have more on KU's series with Baylor at 4.30 on the Jayhawks Sports Report. Now to the pros, the Royals host the Detroit Tigers in a four-game series this weekend, the first of which was last night. Now let's jump right into the third inning now. Eric Hosmer, he ate his Wheaties this morning. He knocks this one way into center field, deepest part of the ballpark, and that would score two. Your score, three to nothing Royals after three. Fifth inning now, Kendry Morales just showing why he's an upgrade every single day over Billy Butler. Knocks this one off the wall. Lorenzo Kane using that speed. He'd fly around third base. He'd score standing up. And the Royals lead four to nothing. Now, same inning. And Salvador Perez breaks out the seven iron. Knocks this one to the wall. Scooping that off the ground. He would score Morales five to nothing Royals after five innings. Salvi really having a great start to the year. Meanwhile, Danny Duffy is on the mound. Long shot for me and Kinsler. But Gerard Dyson is able to track it down. What a catch. That's what speed do. He saves his pitcher there. Duffy, Duffy went 7-plus, one earned run. And the Royals would go on to win by a final score of 8-1. to one. Now These two teams will face off again tonight. First pitch is slated for 7-10. And you can see all the action live on Fox Sports Kansas City. Sticking with baseball, but the high school ranks now. Many players are beginning to pitch earlier and more often in their careers. KUJH's Taylor Kaufman shows us how the additional work could be putting them at risk. It's all fun and games until... I felt it pop when I was swinging a bat. Someone gets hurt. It was bad news to see him go down. I felt a little bit of pain. I rehabbed, got back. Parker tore his so UCL. So they weaved this tendon. Six months of rehab, that didn't work. So I had to get Tommy John surgery. He was out for the season. It's kind of heartbreaking. It really hurts us because he would have been our number one arm. Surgery is becoming more common for young pitchers. A lot of times these kids are just throwing too much when they're 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. They're starting younger, focusing on one sport. I, have a, I only pitch. That's the only thing I do. So I don't bat at all. I just play, I just pitch. And playing a lot. Kids are throwing year round, which is the studies show you need to have three to four months off depending on how old you are. Um, I'd say most of them are probably throwing, you know, at least March through November. What can they do? The easiest way for kids to prevent pitching injuries 
is for them, a parent or a coach, to keep a pitch count. And limit the breaking ball. You know, balls. kids, yeah, I mean, they, they, they get so jacked up and they just want to go out there and go full speed, you know. Luckily, the injuries aren't usually career ending. All young athletes, I expect them to go back to sport. So for Parker. I'll be back just at the start of the season. You know, I'm glad he gets to come back for his senior year. Yes, I would think that the injuries would decrease the more we educate people that work with these athletes on a daily basis. From Lawrence, this is Taylor Kaufman for KUJH Sports. Kirkpatrick says that he's excited to pitch next season and he's planning to continue with baseball in college. Uh, for those who question Andrew Wiggins' decision to leave the Jayhawks after one season last year, don't need to question him anymore. Wiggins not only made history for the Jayhawks, but also the Minnesota Timberwolves as he was named Rookie of the Year, the first T-Wolves Rookie of the Year in team history. Wiggins was the runaway winner of the award, earning 110 out of the 130 first place votes. He finished his first NBA season averaging around 36 minutes a game and 17 points a game, but caught fire in his last 15 games, scoring, and his scoring average jumped to 22 points a game. Not only that, but Wiggins was the only rookie to start all 82 games this season. Wiggins joins Wilt Chamberlain as the only Jayhawks to have won Rookie of the Year award. Well, round one of the NFL draft is in the books, and the Kansas City Chiefs took a little risk. Chiefs used their first round pick to draft former University of Washington quarterback Marcus Peters. Peters was suspended for a game after a sideline tirade and then was later dismissed from the team after a confrontation with an assistant coach. But in his last two seasons, Peters had allowed a completion percentage of just 38% with 24 passes broken up. Now let's get to know the newest Kansas City Chief a little better. He played ball for Washington for three years from 2012 to 2014. Decent size too, six feet tall, 190 pounds. And during his time in Washington, he recorded 129 total tackles and 11 interceptions. So that's somebody that we're gonna wanna watch out for, especially that Sean Smith DUI suspension. He's gonna get a lot of chances early. Well, there's something else that we actually need to watch out for this weekend, actually. You know what that is? I do not know what that. Food vendors, food vendors, baby. Food vendors will line up their trucks on Pennsylvania tomorrow, and the Kansas Food Truck Festival is making a stop here in Lawrence. 15 food vendors, including Lawrence's Beamer's Barbecue, will participate, and the trucks will line up between 8th and 9th Street on Pennsylvania. Tickets are then sold for $10 and will benefit Just Food and Lawrence's Food Bank. Tickets get you into the festival, but they do not include a food voucher. Now, the festival is tomorrow from 5 to 10. And now, you know, everybody wins with that. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love food? I know I do. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and it's for a good cause. Oh, yes. Right? Well, that does it for uh, your KUJH News today. That's all the time we have. Have a good weekend.